Hi, everybody. It's Jack Bryant here. I'm giving a little quick tutorial, uh, video tutorial on um, how to make the cob mixture, the adobe mixture, uh, prior to building your little model house that you're going to do at home. So I went out in my backyard and I dug up some dirt and I didn't take it from our planting beds because that has uh, compost in it and other um, uh, organic material. Uh, this is just plain old dirt from my area here in Chatsworth. And uh, there are a lot of sandstone formations near where I'm at. And uh, so there's a lot of sand. But this sand is kind of loamy. In other words, it does have some um, organic material on it, but not a whole lot. So what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of mashing it up and to find powder if possible. And try to get all the little sticks or stones or anything that may be in your little sand or your uh, uh, soil that you have, you're gonna be using. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix about two parts of the clay. And the clay that I got for this little demonstration is uh, something easily got on Amazon, this is an, um, an air drying clay. In other words, it gets like rock hard just by the air. You don't have to uh, bake it. And you, know, you can use any clay. If you uh, find um, a location such as Joann's or uh, Michael's, you know, craft shop, art supply stores, uh, you might be able to buy um, modeling clay, which is fine too. You don't want to use plasticine or any kind of uh, artificial clay. And um, so I'm not so sure how artificial this particular clay is here, but I wanted to go over it real quick. So I'm going to use two parts of clay, one part of earth, and about a, a half a part of some type of uh, grass or hay, straw. Uh, we have a lot of these growing in my area here. These, uh, they're beautiful, I like them, but they're kind of a, 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 a kind of a hassle having these because they grow like crazy everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead first and prepare the plant material. I'm not using hay, but I wanna chop this up into small little pieces. Now, it might be a good idea to pound this out so that you have long fibers and not these little bits and chunks that I'm making here. But I am going to pound them a little bit and we'll see how much I got here. That should be enough for this purpose here. And um, so you can see this a little bit better. You see, there's not a whole lot in here. Um, okay, you don't want to put too much in. Okay, so the next step is to add a little bit of water, very little bit of water. You can always add more, but if you put too much water in, it's going to make a soupy mixture and it's not going to form well. So I'm just putting a little bit of water in. And like I said, I can always add more. So. There's maybe a little bit different view. You can see there's barely any water in there. Go ahead and put about double that amount of clay. And I'm just going to um, pinch the clay off into little bits. Okay, like that. And I'm going to slowly add bits and pieces, not too big a chunks. And um, pretty soon I'll start mixing it, but make sure I have the right proportions here. You could probably go like half and half soil and clay, about half and half if you want. Um, in fact, maybe that's what I'll try. And I can always add more clay if it's not the right consistency. You want to make sure if you have this type of material, you always put the lid back on it. 
because it will harden up on you and you cannot revive this type of clay, I don't think. If it gets too hard, you're pretty much stuck with it. Okay, so I have this plant uh, material. I'm gonna go ahead and smash it up just a little bit. It's not very much. I'm going to use my fingers to mash it a little bit. Okay. Might be better to pound it, but I'm going to go ahead and add that to our mixture. And then just kind of stir it around a little bit. Push the clay down into the dirt. I don't think you can see that from this angle, so you might be able to see it better here. Yeah, and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. The third graders uh, were able to make some batches of this at, at uh, Three Hill Village this week, and they did get their hands very dirty. But you want to knead this and try to get it as evenly mixed up as possible. I'm going to add a little bit more water, tiny bit. And you just keep doing this until you get really thorough distributed moisture and plant material, and dirt, clay, all mixed together really well. And it doesn't take too long, but for the sake of uh, expediency of this little video, I'd like to make it quick. I may not need it as much as I'd like. And obviously I'm not making enough for the whole structure. Uh, this is just for the demonstration here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna let that sit to the side here for a second. And then I'm going to go ahead and prepare the, the base. Now the base, if you have a little piece of plywood like this, um, it's really ideal. Um, you could have a thicker piece of plywood if you want, or a bigger piece like this one. This bigger one is three quarters of an inch thick. And the smaller one is a half an inch thick. Now, if you don't have any plywood around, uh, you could use um, cardboard. You could use a thick layer of cardboard, uh, maybe two layers, so it doesn't flex around. If it flexes, your structure will probably fall apart. So um, the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to kind of plan out the dimensions here, and I'm going to use this uh, dark pencil so that you can see it on the camera. But basically, I'm going to put the back wall here and a side wall here. And the front wall is going to have a break in it somewhere and maybe a little porch. And here's the other side wall. And you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly squared up in the corners. It can be a little bit lopsided. If I wanted to get it really square, then I would get the tools out to do it. But for this uh, little model that we're doing here, it doesn't have to be that square. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of water onto the surface. Now, if you're using cardboard, um, you don't wanna to put too much at all because it'll start um, dissolving the, the plywood. And what this is doing is preparing the, um, the surface here with a little moisture so that our clay doesn't dry out too quickly and it will stick to the surface better if it's a little moist. Okay, not too much. Now, the first technique I'm gonna show you is called the Cobb construction method. Now, simply put, you're gonna take the adobe or Cobb mixture and you're gonna pinch off little bits of it and just start stacking it up on your surface. You might wanna smash it down a little bit so it sticks onto that surface better, but I'm basically just pinching off pieces 
and kind of following my outline that I made. And um, I'm gradually adding more and more to the, the top layer so that this wall will actually grow um, and get taller. Now, obviously, I'm just going to do a little corner of it so you can see how it's working. So um, the people that were building these cob houses typically would use their hands and just many hands smashing all this material together and piling it up and mixing it and everyone has their job. It's hard for one person to do all of this by themselves. So this is where teamwork really helps. And uh, it's a very good lesson to learn. So I'm just kind of stacking it, you see? And it's getting taller and taller, but not so, so tall yet. And you want to have the bottom of it a little bit thicker than the top part of it. And that's basically it. I'm just kind of pinching it together. And you can see that it is starting to grow a little bit. Okay, so you can see that, whoop, that corner there starting to grow. I pushed it down hard onto the base so that it's not going to fall right off. It may fall right off after it dries, but for now, it's going to stay. And you keep doing that around the perimeter and, and keep layer after layer is getting taller and taller. So um, I think you can get an idea from that. I'll go ahead and use all this clay up just to give you a picture of what it looks like. Now I typically start in a corner and work my way out. But you could start with one layer all the way around, and another layer, and another layer, around the whole perimeter of your structure, if you want. All right, so that's that's kind of the real one, two, three basics about cob house building, cob construction. You just kind of by hand pile up the clay. Now, the next little uh, demonstration I'm going to show you is going to be making the adobe bricks. So I am rolling this out, as you can see, and I'm going to make it about the diameter or the size of, of the diameter of this little roll is going to be about the size of a brick, of the bricks I want to make. So I might have to break this in half so that I've got enough room. And you can see it's getting longer and longer as it gets thinner and thinner. And, um, you know, this type of uh, experience for the children, you don't really want to talk about it because they'll learn about physics um, in, in the later grades. But um, this, what we're doing is we're displacing the material from one lump into a long, thinner um, strand. Now, I think maybe just a little bit more. Now, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some type of a, a tool to cut it with, and it doesn't have to be sharp. You could even use an old credit card or uh, whatever you have. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my knife. I have a bunch of these knives around, and I'm going to cut a piece of this about the size that I'm going to make my bricks, and I'm going to simply make it a by pinching it together. Okay, and there's one brick, about that size. You want it about twice as long as it is, as it is wide. Um, they fit together if they're real uniform like that. So you may have to trim a little bit here and there. Um, and actually, I think that maybe a knife would be um, a better thing to use to cut this like I am. 
because you see the organic material that's in there does not want to uh, cooperate a whole lot. So I mean, it's okay if it sticks out here and there, but not, not too much. So this process will take some time, as you can imagine, to make enough of these little bricks to make a house. You want to really use a critical eye. And you notice probably from this camera that I hope you can. I'll go over an overhead camera here. That one of these is quite a bit bigger than the other one. So that's easy enough to remedy by simply trimming off just a tiny bit. Into more or less the size that I want. Now, if you are using knives to do this work, um, the child needs to be supervised with the knife. Um, you don't want them to get injured making little bricks. So basically, we're going to start in a corner also, and uh, maybe I'll start in that back corner where I started the other one. And it gives, gives me a sense of how many I'm going to need by stacking them like that. Now this should keep you guys occupied for a couple of hours at least doing this. Now, again, you need to have a critical eye about the size. They're gonna compare it with the ones that they've already made. You definitely don't need to get a measuring tool out um, and measure each one exactly. It just can be more or less the same size. All right. Okay. So that's three, six, nine, ten. It's going to be about ten bricks long, and we're probably going to need to go about. Let's see. One, two, three, six, nine, yeah. and about 10 bricks high. Okay, so 10 times 10 is 100. So I'm going to need about 100 of these little bricks for this back, just for the back wall. And Another hundred of them for the front wall. And probably about uh, 75 for each side wall. So you're gonna be making quite a few of these little guys. So give yourself plenty of time. Don't wait till the last minute. And you wanna do it all at, in one operation. You don't wanna let this clay dry out. Um, it's much easier for the little clay bricks to stick to each other when they're wet or damp like this is right now, fresh. And, um, and if you find that you want to go with a slightly bigger brick, you can always add just a little bit to one of the previous bricks. But once it's dry, you can't really do that. It won't, you can't add wet clay to a dry brick. It doesn't work, it doesn't want to stick. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get into mass production here and just cut up a bunch of little wads. And then I'm going to just butt it to the first one going down that row and start my other row. My sidewall row. And I'm going to keep doing that process until I have the whole perimeter built up and I'm up to the height that I want to go to. And I suggest that if you make bricks about this size here that I'm making, which are about, if you want to know, um, 
They're about three quarters of an inch long, each one of them. And they're about a quarter of an inch thick. Okay. Quarter of an inch thick and three quarters of an inch long, more or less. Doesn't have to be perfect. But they fit together much better if they're uniform size. Whatever size you end up with, you need to keep it uniform for all the rest of the bricks that you're going to make. And you want to just go ahead and just, I'm not pressing them down really hard yet. Um, I want to get a few bricks here going before I do that. All right, so you get an idea. I've just started starting here in this corner. And uh, that's the first row. You're gonna do the whole perimeter eventually, but now you wanna go ahead and start stacking your bricks. And this is kind of a key uh, detail that you need to kind of pay attention to right there. What I'm gonna say is that when you start your next course of bricks, you wanna make sure that it overlaps the joint below it. Okay. So I think you could see that little overlap that was happening there. Okay. Now I'm going to overlap in this direction here. Keep going down the course. I can get one more, it looks like, there on that little spot. Then I'll start the sidewall. Now, if you're doing this whole thing while all the clay is wet or damp, moist, then it will stick to the layer below it quite easily. But if you go ahead and let all your little, you make all your little tile, your bricks, and let them dry. Then what you need to do is you need to make um, a little mixture called slip. And what that is, is just the clay or the adobe again, um, but it's gonna be more soupy. So I'll go ahead and make a little slip here uh, if I can. I'm gonna get one more brick out of this. So we're making the adobe bricks. Now you can see that making one at a time is going to be time consuming. So um, we made some forms out of wood at Threefold Village over this uh, in the outdoor classroom. And we made our own adobe bricks where you could theoretically have a lot of form work and be able to make many of them at a time. And they all dry and then you stack them up and glue them together. And the glue um, would be called mortar. In this case, it's simply a wetter version of the same material that we have here. So I'll show you how that's gonna work. I'm going to go ahead and put a little more water in because, um, but not too much. And I'm going to use my fingers to mix it. And I want to get it really soupy, but not too soupy. Okay, I think that'll do it right there. Getting a little soupy here. I'm going to have to add a little bit more. 
So as I was teaching the kids, the consistency of the mix is very important. You have it uniform and, and have the same uh, viscosity, if you want to call it, or the same thickness for each batch of tiles or uh, bricks that you're going to be making. Okay, a little bit more here. Okay, so this is what we would call uh, slip. It's much wetter than the original brick uh, or adobe material that we made. And it basically acts as glue. So we would put a little bit on the bottom as we put each brick down. And as we add another brick on top of it, we put a little layer of the slip. And that will stick nicely. You press it a little bit. And maybe you want to dip your, your brick into the mixture. And I'm carefully arranging these so that they, um, they cross over the seam underneath it. Okay, and I sent you guys a picture of some bricks that this children stacked up. They're some cement blocks is what they are. And they got the idea of how you have to lay these so that they're not on top of each other on the seems so that is really a very fast little demonstration of how you can start building your walls and uh and again if you want to do the whole perimeter first or if you want to start in the corner like i did it it doesn't really matter that much okay so that's uh that's a little quick little tutorial about mixing up your mud and building your block wall and the cob uh, construction. Okay, now I don't want to waste this because uh, this is very valuable stuff. So I'm going to do a funny little thing where I'm going to make half of the wall out of brick and half of the wall is going to be cob construction. Now I also wanted to mention, um, I didn't really talk about it much, but um, the stone houses that are in the Stonehurst neighborhood of Sun Valley were built nearly 100 years ago out of stones that they got from the local washes and the river there, the Tahunga Wash. There's lots of round boulders there that are, you know, hand sized that you can carry. And they would gather all those and they built these beautiful houses. They're very small little bungalows, but 100 years later, they're still standing. And um, you can go see them yourself. There we go. So there's my, the portion of the, of the house that is being built with the, the block or brick. And now I'm gonna use cob over in this area. I'm gonna get the, Get it wet for a second here. There we go. It will dry out, so you want to make sure that you continue doing this wetting of the surface as you're applying the, the clay. So as I was saying about the stone houses, now um, I will do, a, if I have time, I'll do another little tutorial I'm showing you how you can do the same process using the stones and in between each little stone and you can use pebbles, gravel. Um, I have a kind of a pebbles or gravel around my house here that is actually from a riverbed and they're very fine. They're about this big, about an inch, inch or so. And, um, and then you can just stack them up and glue them together with this adobe mixture, the same way that we were gluing the, the, the little uh, adobe bricks together. You make a bit of a slip, a little bit thicker slip, not too thin for using with the stones. 
and you glue them all together. All the stones, stack them up. Again, you can do the whole perimeter first, or you can start in a corner like I am doing here. Okay, so that's it. That's that little batch of uh, of adobe that I made for our sample. And I think you can get an idea, you know, on the outside what it's kind of gonna look like. And then at the very end, after you've got your all your walls built up to the size that you want them, um, you can then take a bit of the slip, a little bit thicker, and go ahead and just cover it over the brick. Okay, so you're putting Adobe an Adobe skin over the Adobe bricks. Okay. And I think you can see what I'm doing here. Now, if this was a real house that we're building, we probably would not be using our hands for this. We would probably be using some trowels, which are um, basically just uh, pieces of steel that will smooth everything out. You don't have to touch it. Or you could use a wooden trowel, but it gives a nice smooth surface onto the brick. You can see some of that plant material. I'll hold this up to the camera so you can see it a little bit better. So um, having a little bit of this plant material in here is not going to be uh, a problem. You can just fold it out over and tuck it in and continue with your project. Now you can also cover the outside of the cob portion with the same type of a slip, uh, a thinner mix of clay and mud to give it a kind of a smooth finish as well. And then you wanna uh, smooth it out, of course. So I hope you can see this well from where you're at with this camera, the inside and the outside. Hello everyone, uh, welcome back for part two of our little um, tutorial on how to build the roof portion for your little model house. Now, there are a lot of ways to do it, but the way I'm gonna show you is fairly cut and dried. Um, I, get, I have these willow branches that I use for lots of different things, and it's gonna be perfect for this purpose. Now, at the base of them, it's a bit thicker than at the ends of them. So I might want to use uh, maybe this area here to make my um, structure, and then uh, and then after I'll add some thinner ones in between to fill in all the spaces. So you'll need to have uh, plenty of these around, but I'm going to go ahead and use this little gardening shears to clip them all evenly and getting the, cur the curved portion of it off. So that last little bit down here at the bottom of this one anyway is curved and that one's curved. So I'm just gonna put that off and put that off. And then I'm gonna make all of these the same size as the length of our house. So if you look at um, part one, we took a piece of plywood as our base. You can use, um, uh, plywood would be preferable, but you could use a thick um, piece of cardboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this with a pencil so that I don't lose track of where I'm working. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip all these off. And this is how long I want to start with. And I can always make them shorter, but I can't make them longer once they've been cut. Now, it might be a little challenging for your children to do, 
You do need to have some hand strength to do this and you want to make sure that your fingers are not going to get cut out of the way. And Trying to do too many is going to be impossible, so you just have to do it one at a time. Okay, that should be enough for now. Get out of the way. Gather all my little pieces. You can use any kind of little branches, but they should be straight, as straight as possible. And that's why I like using the willow. Now the willow, you can harvest your own willow if you go on a hike near a creek or a riverbed that has some water in it. Um, the willows like to grow along the sides of it. And uh, you can try to grab some of that if you see some that's nice and straight. So I have a few of them here laid out that I'm going to do my um, construction with. So I'm going to pick the fattest one of them, that one. And that, I want to get the few of the fattest ones that I have here. Okay. Oh, that's not too. There's one. A little short. And there's a nice. Nice one and and this one. So I've got them now kind of separated by sizes a little bit. I go to the thinnest ones next. I put them off to the side. And then I have the medium ones left in the middle. So three little stacks by size. So I'm going to build a roof that's called, um, well, I guess you'd call it a gable roof. And that's your basic A-frame type of a roof. And it's gonna be more complicated than a shed roof. A shed roof is simply one angle. Okay, let's see if I, um, so this is your gable roof, kind of an A-frame shape. And then a shed roof would just go from one side of the building over to the other side of the building, just in one plane. And it would keep the water uh, flowing in, uh, preferably towards the back of the house and not towards the entrance of the house. Now, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little frame of my uh, larger sticks. Put these two out here, out of the way. Now I'm going to just kind of lay these out. Now I want it to be larger than the houses. So if you remember, we, we drew some lines in. Those are going to be the perimeter of the house we're building out of either cob or... Um, Adobe brick. And um, I'm going to send you one more little video after this one uh, of using stone. But the roof structure that we're doing now needs to be bigger than the whole house structure. So I'm going to kind of lay out this frame. And I've never really used that hot glue that you can buy in a glue gun. Um, I think it might be a little dangerous for um, unmonitored third graders to be doing. Uh, I do believe that it's pretty hot uh, and it can burn them. So uh, if you are going to use hot glue, make sure that there's plenty of good supervision. And um, so this would be the first step here is to lay that out like this. And um, I'm not going to use hot glue. I'm not going to use regular glue. I'm just going to use little bits of this adobe. And I'm going to pinch it down onto each corner to somewhat hold that, that shape. 
And I'm just gonna squeeze it all in there really good. Each little joint, really pack it in. Now this Adobe mixture that I'm making, I or that I, I'm using, I uh, made this in the previous little instructional video using um, commercial air dry clay that hardens quite hard just by the air. You don't have to bake it to harden it. And I mixed it with some soil that's around my yard. and some hay or plant material to add some fiber to it. Helps to strengthen it when it wants to dry. It, I mean, when it dries, it wants to crack a little bit. So you want to uh, control the cracking wherever you can. And one of the ways you can control it is by putting some of this straw or hay or grass to kind of bind it together. Okay, so I've got this more or less rectangular and it's more or less the size of our house um, for the floor plan of the house. Now, the next step is I'm going to put a little column in the middle of the side walls. So I'm gonna make a little column here and that's simply going to support the, the ridge, the ridge pole. Okay, and so I'm going to make it about this tall, this column. And you could make it round, or you can make square it off a little bit if you would like. I'm going to square mine off just a tiny bit. I think you can see that. And then I'm going to go ahead and place it right about in the center of this side frame beam. Okay, so that's that one. And it'll should stay there temporarily. And I'll make another one the same size. And I probably will run out of clay mixture this adobe mixture before i finish but hopefully not okay about the same height here and i'll just square it up again like i did the first one try to make it uniform as you can i'm hurrying through this to make it fast but uh, and I want to measure against the other one. Go ahead and place it about halfway on the other side beam. And I'm mashing it in there pretty good so it will stick and stand upright while I'm doing my other construction. Okay, so I think you can see what I've got going here so far. This little framework. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take one of my larger sticks again, and I'm gonna lay it right across the top of those two posts. And I'm gonna mash it down in there so it'll have a nice little pocket to sit in. This is not really easy work. So it's more or less level. Okay, I think you can see what I've got going here so far. Now the next thing is I'm going to put a little bit more clay on the top of that to kind of glue it together and to hold it in place while we're putting on our rafters. So putting that over the top like this. That's pretty delicate at this point. Um, your child definitely will need some help with this. This is not easy for their hands to do. It's not about strength, it's about this dexterity. And in third grade, their body is growing and they're coming into their, their, um, their hands and their muscles are forming, the bones are still forming and they don't quite have the same kind of abilities that we do when we're all grown up with the hands. 
It's a slow process to learn how to use your hands. A process that many people um, don't do anymore. Okay, so that's our uh, beginning little frame. So now I'm gonna, I've got just probably enough clay to, to do my other four corners and begin the process of laying all my rafters on. So I'm going to go with the next size rafter, uh, not the smallest ones. I'm gonna go ahead and build this next part of the framework just using these little pieces here. Now, you can see from this um, that these are gonna to be too long. See how they're sticking up over the top quite a bit? Right where my fingers are up here, whoop. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut them so that not so much is sticking out. So they're all gonna be pro pretty much the same length. I'd like to have it sticking out over the other side, the front and the back, so that when the water does fall off the roll off the roof, it won't land right next to the building. It'll go out away from the building a foot or two. So that's why I want to have it uh, overhang a bit here in the front. So I'm going to go ahead and just hold that like that and cut that first one and double check and make sure it's going to work okay on the back side of it, that same size. Looks like it'll work. And then um, the process would be then to start with the corner one. Mash it into that little post that we made. Uh, let's see, what did I cut this one to? No. So I'm going to cut a few of these guys. All uniform size. And I'll just lay these on there, just like I did the first one. And then I'm going to take a little bit of that clay that I have left and kind of mash that in there and pinch it together. Now this clay, this self-hardening clay, it does get hard fast. So you don't want to make up too much of it or you'll end up with some of it that's too dry and um, you won't be able to use it. So just mix up as much as you're gonna be using at each step. And then you'll become an expert at mixing this by the time you're done with the, this project. Now, the idea of doing this separately than, uh, than actually having it connected to the house as we're building it is that, uh, I would like the children to be able to take the whole you know, roof off so that you can look on the inside of the house and see what the walls look like, see where the fireplace is, if there is one, um, see where the bed would be. And they could even draw all that stuff onto the cardboard or the plywood if they're using plywood. Um, you know, if, if you have a dollhouse at home, we have several dollhouses around here. My house, I have four daughters. I'm sorry, three daughters and a son. And um, there's a number of dollhouses here that they've had that I've built for them. And I've made little furniture. So I could probably search out that stuff and find it and go ahead and furnish the interior of my little house, but I don't think I'm gonna do that, but you could if you wanted to. Just try not to use any plastic. Um, there have been studies that show that when you're using natural materials, it's um, your senses are able to process the whole experience much better than if it's just plastic. Now that's my own take on it, but um, I'm not sure the scientists would agree with me, but I think that there are studies that showed the benefit of using natural materials. Okay, now, 
So I'm going to build up these little joints down at the bottom because that's where most of the stress is going to be once it's all put together and it's being moved around and dried. Okay. And I do believe I'm going to get one of those little hot glue guns myself and try it out and see if it'll make things easier. But in reality, you wouldn't use a hot glue gun to Put your pro your house together. I wouldn't. I'm talking about a real house, <laughs> but it'd be fine for a little model like this, I think. Although it is plastic, that hot glue, it's not a natural material. It's always best to use natural material if you can. So um, even wood glue might might be beneficial for this purpose. So I'm double checking all my joints, okay? So I have the basic framework of an A-frame type of a roof or also known as a gable roof. So then the next steps of course, will be to fill in all of your spaces in between everything. And you'll use the same process we just went through. You'll cut your rafters to the right length and you wanna um, try to go um, one on one side, one on the other side, one on one side, one on the other side, one on one side. So you wanna alternate how these are going in. And of course, it's not cooperating right now <laughs> and you can't see what I'm doing here. Um, I think you can get the idea that these are all just going to stack together and you're going to fill up the entire space with these. Now, if you choose not to, if you find that this is too much of a challenge, if you just have this framework, I think it will be okay. So I'm looking at it and I'm trying to line everything up so it's more or less perpendicular to the floor. posts that I made here are not leaning too far. And what I'm gonna do next is just use up the very last bit that I have of this uh, adobe mixture, just to kind of really reinforce these corners so that when it dries, there's not one area that's real thin and one area that's thick. It'll all be uniform thickness over the top of these rafters and really holding this together. Now, the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gently, very, very, very gently flip it over and put a little layer of clay on the bottom here to help kind of join it all together. This is very delicate work. Again, children might have a little bit of a challenge doing this. And I'm not going to have enough clay. It doesn't look like to do it as well as I'd like to, but you get the general idea. So you want to cover up that joint. Do you see that one? So that's where it'll fall right out. I have a little bit left here in my mixing pan, but not much. I really don't want to make any more right now. So that's the general idea here, guys, building your roof. And if you don't want to put on all the rafters, if you just want to do the framework like I just did here, that's perfectly fine. And then it could be attached permanently to the house because you can see through it and see what's below. So it would be fine if you didn't put all the rafters. On. Okay, well, that was a long video, guys. Um, sorry for the link, but it, there's a lot of details, as you could see. Uh, if you like the video, or if you like to watch things like that about Waldorf woodworking or practical arts, uh, please click the subscribe button. There's many videos that uh, will be coming out, and you'll get first notice. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.